woman that you see. Her name Wambui Otieno. Wambui Otieno. Wambui is spelled W A M B U I. And Otieno is O T I E N O O T I E N O. Wambui Otieno. This is the person we're talking about today. Wambui Otieno was born Virginia Edith Wambui Otieno. She was born Virginia Edith Wambui Otieno. She decided that she didn't need all those European names. She dropped all the European names, including the Virginia and the Edith, and decided to call herself Wambui Wayaki Otieno Mbugua. You want to hear it again? Wambui Wayaki Otieno Mbugua. Wambui is spelled W A M B U I. Wayaki is W A I Y A K I. Otieno is O T I E N O. And Mbugua is M B U G U A. She was married once, she got divorced, and she went into another marriage. My God. She was born into a prominent Kikiyu family. Now, the Kikiyus are also called the Kwaikois. In fact, this is history. These are the people with the biggest Botox in the world. They don't need any surgery. It comes to them naturally. When you go to South Africa, Nine out of every ten women, their backside is like mountain Kilimanjaro. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is why every now and then some of our guys here are traveling to South Africa by heart. My brother, these are the Kikiyus. How many of us remember the story of Sarah Batman? She was a Kikiyu, a.k.a. Kwai Kwai or Kwai San who came all the way from the banks of the Gamtus River. Hallelujah. Hear me now. She was also born into a prominent Kikuyu family. This time around in Kenya. Hey! And see what happened now. Hey! She was married to a man who was a Luo. L-U-O. Now, the Leo people of Kenya and Tanzania are a Nilotic ethnic group native to Western Kenya and the Mara region of Northern Tanzania. They are a great people. In fact, they are the fourth largest ethnic group in Kenya. My brother, my sister, only next to the Kikiyu and the Luya and Kalenjin, my brother, my sister. Hey, this was where she was born. At a young age, she was interested in education. She went to school. She became a writer, an activist, because she hated how women were being treated by men. My brother, my sister. Hey, she was born in 1936, and she died. In 2011, in August, can I tell you more? She died on the 30th day of August in 2011 of heart failure. But let me take you a little bit into her background. You will love her. My brother, my sister, there's an autobiography. Autobiography means a book she wrote about herself called Mao Mao's Daughter, a life history. Hey, in that account, mm -mm -mm. she claimed that her ancestor was Waiyaki Wahinga. My brother, my sister, and this Waiyaki Wahinga gave her extra powers to stand against all forms of opposition. Mm. She claimed she was a granddaughter of Waiyaki Wahinga. A Kikiyu leader who was arrested in 1892 
by the officials of the Imperial British East Africa Company and who died in suspicious circumstances soon after uh, arrest. My brother, my sister, in that autobiography, she talked more about herself. Tomorrow we'll talk about Weyaki Wahinga. So you get to know this person more. My brother, my sister, she fought in Mau Mau activities in 1952. When she was at a secondary school, a teenager, she swore the oath of allegiance to the Mau Mau. And in 1954, two years after she swore that allegiance, she left home and joined the Mau Mau insurgency in Nairobi. Who were the Mau Mau people? They were the people who were fighting for the independence of Kenya. And they were in the bush for so many days and nights. No comb, no scissors ever touched their hair. And they had dreadlocks on their hair. Head. She became part of them as a teenager in the bush, helping to cook, to look for food and gather firewood. As a teenager, fighting for the independence of Kenya and beyond. Her. She was involved in the campaign to eradicate the color bar in Nairobi, fighting racism. This great black woman. Hey! Brother, my sister, she was arrested more than 100 times. One woman. Hey! In the period up to about 1960, one boy had three children with her fiancé. They were not married. She was unable to marry because of family opposition. Because the two of them came from two different ethnic groups. Oh, yes. But in her eyes, she was married traditionally in her spirit. So she called it a marriage. She was kicking you. And her husband of fiance, fiance, my brother, my sister, was Lou. Hey. She continued to fight. She worked closely with Tom Mboya and some other such people. Hey. She moved from camp to camp, country to country, fighting. Hey. She brought women together to fight against the slave master, the so-called slave thief. My brother, my sister, interested. Interested in so many activities that will bring independence to her country. She joined so many different unions, including the trade unions of Kenya where she matched women against employers and uh, beyond. My brother, my sister, today we remember this great black woman. Her husband, Silvano Melia Otieno, died suddenly of a heart attack on the 20th of December in 1986. By tradition, she was not supposed to receive anything because they were, one, not married, and two, they belonged to two different ethnic groups. But she was able to fight so hard using the legal system to get almost everything her husband gave to her in marriage. Hey, my brother, my sister, this great black woman, today we remember her. Oh, my God. We remember her. We remember her. Mm -mm -mm -mm. She entered into a leverage marriage. Now, a leveret marriage is a type of marriage in which the brother of a deceased man is obliged to marry his brother's widow. My brother, my sister, mm -mm -mm. she entered into it without knowing, getting to be with a man from that tradition automatically. When your husband dies, you are supposed to be married to the brother. That's if he has a brother. Mm, 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 mm. But she refused that. She said, I'm in love with your brother, not with you. I saw your brother and I saw you and I went for your brother. Whether he dies or is still alive, you are not my husband. My God of mercy. She fought the tradition. My brother, my sister, today we remember this great, beautiful woman. She fought for 30 years. And in the 30 years since the Otieno burial case, 
the Kenyan jurisprudence on burials has evolved. Now, that has been put aside and the courts have allowed that, yes, different tribes could get married and the law of the land would stand as against the tradition, oh my God have mercy, of racism or tribalism. She fought for it. Today we remember you. Mommy, why you be? You changed Kenya. You changed the status of women. You fought a very hard fight. Mommy, the other was sick. Mommy, when you in court, when you in court, when you in court, when you in court, when you in court. In the burden of knowledge, I ask you now that you know what to do. Be an annual lay, mini oba fey, and zuna kagane me zaka yine yam pa bango boka yan nung fifi ya yan yanu kaina woba na yung webe de lele and jima singa be kunne lele and jima singa beri. Tu tu wavi, tu tu wavi. <laughs>